Good morning, YouTube. Good morning. How you doing this morning? <clears throat> I know your boy ain't made a video in a while, but uh, I was trying to wait until that one year would come up and it's here. So let's talk about this one year review, the good and the bad and the ugly. Stay tuned. Your boy Scooby-Doo. See if we can find a, a pretty nice clean trailer to put go put this furniture in. But the catch to it, you want it on a good chassis. <laughs> you want a good chassis if, if possible. There's one there. Let me uh hold on, let me jump out and check. See, this is what I was trying to tell them. If they would put the chassis, the empty trailers in one spot and the loaded trailer is in another one, it'll make it a little bit easy and everything. Let me see if this trail over here is empty. Hold on. All right, she's a good one. She's a good one. She's a good one. Let's write this trailer number down. Pretty good container. And, uh, chassis. What you do, you have to write down the trailer, the container, and the chassis number. And then, <laughs> and then uh, you bring it, you come down, once you write it down, then you turn around, you go to uh, contact dispatch, send it to your dispatch, they'll connect you to it. Once they connect you to the trailer, then uh, you just turn around and head on out the gate with it. But see this one, I'm going to show you when I show you the pre-trip on Anytime you're picking up a chassis, a container on a chassis or a container period, make sure that you uh, check it before you hook to it. See if any defects on it. Okay, you heard the click. Let's get out and hook up and do a pre-trip. Turn the camera around. Let's go. I had to send that message so that uh, they can uh, had to send the message so that way they can uh, hook me to the container and stuff. But remember one thing: anytime you're picking up a container, whether it's loaded or whether it's empty, 
Or you pick it up any trailer, reefer trailer, dry van, flatbed, uh, step deck, any type of equipment. Do an inspection on the job. Do a complete inspection on the trailer. When I say complete, everything. I mean everything. I'm gonna flip the camera around. On these chassis, make sure the beer box, no bills are left in it. If it is, just remove them. Make sure your pin is in. Make sure that lever is, is latched. That's your safety lever. Uh, some people run a zip tie through there. I put a zip tie where you see the little hole lit. It goes straight through, see it? Uh, let's see, got my hand in the way. See that little hole? You line that up, run a zip tie through it. It'll keep it from coming to loose. Always, always come under, always hit this handle. You heard it? Make sure it clicks in. Even though it's, 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 you heard it click, still come up under and look for that latch going across the bar going across the king bed. As long as you see that, you're good. Okay? Do your tug test. Crank, you check your landing gear while you're messing with it. Okay? On these chassis, you have to check everything. Check everything. The reason why I say that, I found one. One day I picked up a chassis at the rim. And I found a, uh, I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about, okay? Let it up. Put the handle back where it go. Put the handle back where it go. Right here. You see there? One of these bolts was out. This boat holds these landing gear legs on it. But you got the bolts there, your bolts here. You gotta check all that on each side. Don't just drop your head and don't look. Check them. Right here, these three bolts. That combines this front part of the chassis with the back part of the chassis. Make sure those three bolts are in there. Like I told you, you gotta get down under the trailer. Look in there, look for them bolts. I know you said it's just too darn much scoot. Everywhere you see a boat, make sure it's connected. Permit. Registration. Check the registration. They made the registration on the trailers. No matter what you pull now, they made it where the registration won't expire. But make sure you got the registration in there, please. Make sure the registration is in there. And twist it till it locked. Okay? There you go, see it wasn't locked. See the reason why it's not locking? Because this here, look cable is catching. There you go. Make sure it's locked. Look for your reflectable tape. Make sure that the, the box is sitting on top of the chassis. It should be resting on top of the chassis all the way down. Sometimes you'll get these chassis that's kind of bent. You'll see a little bow, but see over there on that side and everything. You gotta come under here, check your slider, your slider pin. Pull on that handle. Make sure it works. You know, look for your brakes, look for leaks. You see oil streaks on your tires in, under the hill? That means you got an inside wheel leak on them. Check them. Check your brakes. Look at your brake pads. Make sure you got brake pads, not at the, just at the bottom, at the top too. Look in between the wheels. This trailer here, I don't have the lines going to it, so I'm going to have to get my air pressure gauge, check the air pressure, and we'll do that. Pull your valve, drain your tank. Yeah, you got an air tank. Drain that air tank. Make sure ain't no moisture in it. Check it again. Lugs, look for the shiny on the, on the lugs. You see any shiny spaces? That means the lug is loose, okay? You got, these are things you gotta check no matter what type of trailer you pull. Mud flap, please. Make sure you got a mud flap on there. To a mud flap here on the tractor. If you're not pulling a trailer, you don't have to have a mud flap on there. If you're pulling a trailer, you do not have to have a mud flap. But if you're not pulling a trailer, you've got to have mud flaps on your tractor, people. You got to. Checking your rear pin lock. Same thing here, you can run a zip tie through here into this hole right here. You can zip tie that or just run it around here. You can zip tie it. Checking these lugs again. All the nuts, nuts and bolts. Check them, yeah. 
out lights. Number one ticket getter. Tag light. If tag light ain't working, you're going to get a ticket. You're going to get a ticket. All right? Those are things you got to check, y'all. There I go again, stepping on that sticky tape. Man. What's up with that? <laughs> but, uh, check. Make sure that pin going crossways in there. See it? It goes crossway. That secures the trailer. People, I don't care what type of trailer, closed trailer you drive. Dry van, refrigerated, refriger uh, dry van, reefer, container. Always, people, always, if you got to get inside that trailer, make sure you got your cell phone with you, no matter what. Make sure you have your cell phone with you at all times. What you check on the left, you check it on the right, okay? No difference. With me, I check everything the same from the, uh, well, you can't pull the uh, airline on this side because there's not one on this side. But you still do the same thing. You're checking your tires, looking for any debris in them, cuts, ball spots. But once again, looking under, checking your brake pads. Looking under, checking your brake pads on both sides. Both sides, looking at the brake pads. Checking them springs, your lines. You got to do all that, y'all. I know you don't want to get on that ground and get dirty, but that's something you have to do. Your lugs on each side. Look for them shining spots. When you take these lugs loose, they're going to be a shiny. The thread's going to be shiny. They let you know the lugs are, are bagging off on them, okay? Check them all. Reach in there and grab them. That's why you're supposed to have gloves on anyway. See, you're supposed to have your gloves on. All right, but the same thing you do on the left, start on the driver's side, go down, around the back, come back up. And once again, go back under the trailer. Please go under the trailer when you're going back up. Check it again, make sure. Okay? I think we gotta do, y'all. Same thing up here. Check them kingpin, check the laps, make sure it's in there. Certified, certification, check the inspection. This was inspected 323. That means it don't expire to 324. It expires a year from now. So those are things you have to check out here, no matter what. And like I said, no matter what type of trailer, enclosed trailer you're pulling, make darn sure you have your cell phone with you because there are some drivers, some low down drivers, that's in our midst, devil people, that will uh, shut the door and lock you in the trailer. At least if they do, you can call, call 911 and say, hey, I'm here. Somebody just shipped me in the trailer. What I normally do, like I told you before, is take a padlock. When you open that back door, padlock it. Lock it against the trailer. Padlock the trailer door. Put your one on each side. That way they can't, they can't move that handle to lock you in. Always padlock your trailer when you're going into it, okay? When you're driving down the road, keep a padlock on your trailer. If some, a lot of y'all new drivers that never been to Laredo, you have to keep your trailer padlock. No matter what type of trailer you pull, if it's empty, if it's loaded, you have to keep it padlocked because there are drivers, there are people that would sneak in the back of your trailer, jump in the back of your trailer and stuff. So you have to check these things, people, no matter what, okay? That is something that you have to do. So we didn't check everything. We ready to roll. Like I said, we headed to Ekru. We're gonna go pick up some furniture down at Ashley. And we're gonna take it to, uh, we're going to Big Lots down in uh, Montgomery, Alabama. So if you're down in Montgomery, look your boy Scoob up. I'll be down there and everything. Buy you a cup of coffee and a donut. <laughs> Buy you a cup of coffee and a donut. But uh, we're going to talk a little bit. Uh, when we get down there, when we stop for this evening, while we're getting loaded, we're going to talk and we'll start the video on my one-year review of the one and only J.B. Hunt in a motor. I'm going to tell you the good, the bad, the good and the bad and ugly. So uh, stay tuned. The good, the bad, the ugly on JB Hunt coming up right after we get to Ekru. So let's go down here and get here. This is a live load and we got a live unload. So be right back when we get to Ekru. This is your boy Scoob. All right there, YouTube. We'd have made it down here to uh, Ekru, Ekru, Mississippi to uh, Fusion Furniture, which is right next door to uh, American Furniture and what is this? Ashley Furniture. Man, I didn't know Ashley 
and grew like they have grown, man. Actually, the furniture have really gotten big, man, uh, and everything. Did that little warehouse. I remember when I first came down there with uh, Magneal uh, Trucking, man. Not Magneal, uh, Massengill. Massengill Trucking. It wasn't that big of a warehouse, man. It was nice, but it wasn't as big as they are now. They have really grown and brought some more land down there. That's, that's pretty good, man. Uh, built up some cut, put some truck stops down here and everything. But anyway, let's get into it while we get loaded. Uh, they getting ready to load us up here. Uh, uh, my one year review on uh, JB Hunt. Uh, the good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, the good thing is, I can truthfully say is they ain't gonna hound you. <laughs> you won't. You're gonna take off. They ain't gonna hound you. They ain't gonna bug you. But think about it. Don't go to them acting a the fool about uh uh your money your check and stuff when you ain't taking a check home so you can't act a fool with them on that but um if something going on you need to be off hey just tell them and uh let them know when you're ready to come back um that i can give them an a on on that there because they have really worked with me on the loss of my sister-in-law and me getting sick and everything uh my wife dealing with that my brother dealing with that uh, they have truly worked with me so I will give them an A on that um, uh, the equipment I ain't never ain't had no problem with the equipment uh, the first truck I had you know had problems with it trouble it kept going in the shop but if your truck go in the shop they pay you you get paid and you sitting at home while your truck in the shop but uh, uh, you do get paid uh, they will offer you a uh, another truck, but at the time they didn't have any new equipment come in, so uh, every truck he would offer me was filthy. So uh, they just said okay. So my truck was in the shop. Till it come out the shop, you getting paid for it. Uh, oh man, let's see. Uh, on that, so the equipment is good. Uh, they service the equipment every fifty thousand miles, and after that. Uh, you can get a truck wash. Uh, they did. Uh, they do let you get two truck washes a month. You can get two truck washes a month at the Blue Beacon. Just call uh, Breakdown, and they will uh, get you. They'll take care of the PO. Let them know what Blue Beacon you're going to be buying. Boom. Get the truck wash. So I do like that. Uh uh, those are the things that I like about over here. Uh, the things that I don't like since the year I've been here is the communication between the planners, the driver, the planners, the dispatcher, and the drivers. Uh, the communication sucks over here. It sucks. There's no communication at all between the planners, the dispatcher, and the drivers in my book. Now, everything I'm telling you is my experience over the year I've been here. There's been people here, for, I talked to drivers, been here 20 some years. Uh, 14, 12, 5, 2 years. They enjoying it and everything. So I'm only, what I tell you is what my experience in the year that I've been here is my experience. So uh, that's all I can tell you is I'm telling you on my experience. Uh, the communication sucks. Uh, they will send you a long four, five lines of stuff that don't have no concern really don't have concern but i appreciate the little safety notices and updates that they send but the same way they send all these five paragraphs they can send eight words pre-planned pre-planned cancel stand by for a new pre-plan that's it eight words eight freaking words and they will not send them so i think that is uh the, the part that uh, i don't like is that there that i didn't like is, is the communication and everything. Um, the next one is uh, that I don't like is my coworkers. Uh, it it, it irris, irritates me. My coworkers, they will not. If they're out in California, up in New York, up in Chicago, in North Carolina, and the load is coming to Memphis to unload off the rail, they will not leave a copy of the bills with the trailer. That's that is so crazy. That is so crazy. I showed you in several videos where you can zip tie the bills to the back door if it don't have a bill box. Zip tie it to the back door. You know, zip tie it. Take your 
packing slip. Stick it to put it in the packing slip and stick it to the front of the trailer. Uh, there are several things that they can do to make sure that the bills get with the load, but they don't. They keep the bills. And the thing about it is, they're keeping the bills and then they're throwing them away. Because they don't need them. Once they take a photo of them bills, boom, that's it. You take a photo of the bills, it goes into your to the dispatcher and stuff, they gets it, and uh, they throw the bills away. They will not send the bills with it. So the thing that will get you is, I guess it's okay if you're picking up at the BN because you're right there by the yard. But when you're out there at North Fork Southern, out in Rossville, or you're in the down over by going toward close to the old bridge on Mallory to pick up at a uh, NS uh, CN, and then you get over there to get the load, and the bills are not with the trailer. But you might be going over to Little Rock. You might be going to Tennessee. Well. You got to go all the way back by the yard over on Lamar and Tucker Road just to get some bills. Um, they have set it up now to where you can take the tablet and when you get to a customer, you can ask them for an email and boom, boom, boom. You can email the bills that way. Uh, some customers will take it. Some customers will be like, well, I need I need the uh, rest of the bill. I need all the bills. Well, most of the drivers just screenshot the front bill. I go through every page and screenshot it. That way they got a copy of the same bills I got that's with the trailer. Uh, that there kind of irritates you there, man, uh, that the drivers won't leave the bills with the load and stuff and everything. Uh, the next thing that kind of irritates you is we as drivers, and I said we, uh, this has happened at several companies, uh, not just here, where as a driver, no damage, sees damage on a unit, hook to it and still take the trailer to the customer. And then when you get in there as a drop and hook customer, you got to go in, drop your trailer, grab an empty, and what? That trailer that he he knew the damage was on, instead of him getting the box mounted off, taking off that chassis, put on another one, or take it by the yard, let them fix it right quick, and then go with it. Especially if it's a drop and hook. Now, if you're going to stay like this trailer I'm hooked to now that we've done the preacher for I'm going to take this load. I'm getting live load. When I get down to Montgomery, I got to get a live unload. So I'm keeping this trailer until they tell me to take it somewhere and drop it. So this next load, this load here is a live load and a live unload. So I'm going. when I get unloaded, I'm going to take the trailer and go somewhere else and probably drop it then. But we've done the pre-trip inspection. The trailer's in good shape. That's called looking out for your fellow driver. You're looking out for your fellow drivers. You have to start doing that out here in the trucking industry. Especially if you work for the same company, you have to start looking out for each other. Because if you don't do it, won't nobody do it. So, um, that is the other thing that I don't like, is that there. Um, and as you know, we have went with the inward facing cameras. They have turned them on. Um, I'm dealing with it. I'm dealing with it. I don't like it because, they're, oh, you're distracted. You're distracted. I'm sitting down, you know, I had something stuck in my finger from when I opened the door and a uh, piece of little piece of metal, I was trying to get it out and one weaving and nothing, but look down for a minute. Oh, you're distracted. Oh, you come on, dude. Come on, dog. That's, that's a headache. That's truly a headache. But like I said, I said it once, I said it again, you either deal with it or what? There you have it. You move on. And you don't need to sit in there fussing about it. You either deal with it or move on. Simple as that. So, uh, other than that, y'all, it is what it is, man. Uh, I'm dealing with it. And uh, you deal with it until you can find something better. You know, or if, you, if you're okay with it, keep rolling. Uh, as far as your boy Scoop, like I told you before, I tell you again, I don't know what the good Lord has in store for me yet, but it's in his hand. I done prayed about it, so I'm leaving it up to him and everything. Whichever way the good Lord leads me, we gonna go. But uh, let's see. Other than that, overall, between the, overall, the whole big picture of J.B. Hunt, is if you're looking for 
a, 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 a city position, I mean a local job, okay, J.B. Hunt would be it for you if you're not looking to get out on the road. But uh, if you're looking for, and there are, there are trips, let, let me say this. My, uh, my vision of a regional driver is leaving out on Sunday, going maybe 500 miles, going to bed for Monday, picking up, unloading Monday morning, boom. Deadhead somewhere, pick up another load, come back to Memphis or go somewhere else and everything. And on Friday, you load, pick up that, unload Friday morning, reload Friday, come, uh, Friday or Thursday, Friday, whichever, whenever, whenever your off day is, and get home. Go straight to Memphis or you go out 300 miles, you turn around, you get unloaded that next day, you turn around and come back. If it's a live unload, if it's a drop and hook, fine. You go out three, four hundred, five hundred miles, drop it, grab an empty, boom, and come back. Uh, five hundred mile radius is what I'm trying to say. My uh, view of a regional drive is uh, loads five hundred miles, three to five hundred miles. Well, over here, I say two hundred, two hundred miles, two to two fifty is what you would do is a regional driver so my view of a regional driver at jb hunt would be um, <laughs> a driver a regional driver is a city position with a sleeper on you that's it you're, you're a city driver with a sleeper that's all it is uh sometimes you can make it back sometimes you can't so you have to stop and take a 10 hour break they don't do split logging over here so when your clock run out, your clock run out. You can't split log over here. You have to take a full 10 hour break over here at uh, JB. Uh, other than that, if I had to give JB Hunt a grade from A, from an A to a C, I would have to say they'll be a B. I give them a B uh, because they have some good points and they do have some bad points. But those little bad points that JB Hunt has over the year I've been here. They could be fixed. They could be fixed, man. If they just uh, listen to the drivers, they could be fixed. For a good example is like the drop yard we was at this morning. Why is it so hard to take all your loaded trailers? You could put a hundred. Think you could put what is it? Yeah, I think it's about a hundred trailers or fit eighty trailers or something. You could put maybe eighty trailers in the center of the lot loaded trailers back to back just bag them back to back everywhere else around the yard put your chassis in one place and put all your empty containers uh on the outer perimeter of the yard bagged up against the fence all your your empties that way you know when you coming in you looking for an empty go to the gate drive around the gate you looking for a load it's gonna be sitting right there in the middle of the lot but instead they got empty chassis in the middle of the lot and everything that's just you know that's just me. Like I said, everything I'm telling you all is my opinion, my views on since I've been here. A year that I've been at JB Hunt. This is what I've noticed. Uh, like I said, some people might feel different, but me, that's my views. And this is my channel and everything. But uh, other than that, it is what it is, y'all. It is what it is. Uh, once again, you had to deal with it. Or you move on. You either deal with it or you move on. And everything. Simple as that. But um, other than that, y'all, like I said, if I had to grade them, I would give them a B. And the B B because they can they can do better. Jiggy Hunt can do better. Jiggy Hunt is a Fortune 500 company, man. They're a Fortune 500 company. They can do better, but. It is what it is, man. Like I said, listen to me. You either deal with it or you move on. Simple as that. You either deal with it or you move on. Uh, I'm not a job hopper, but I know how I won't think I would like for things to run and go. But, hey, sometimes it ain't going to always go the way you want it to go. But out of all these years of being out on this road, believe me, I know how it should be when you're driving these trucks. I know how it should be, but like I said, it is what it is, man. 
It is what it is. But uh, other than that, y'all, like I said, it's been great. The year been great. Uh, what are my plans? Once again, I'm gonna let the Lord lead me on that. I let the Lord lead me on it. But God has been good to me. Uh, looking at this guy bagging in. Man, he's doing, I didn't know these water plug holes was that deep, man. I mean, they deep. That thing went all the way up to his step. And stuff. Deep potholes out here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Flip the camera. See how deep the potholes is? That's a deep potholes. They deep now. Yep. Them some deep potholes, baby. But uh, like I said, other than that, y'all, this is my one year review on JB Hunt. Uh, am I going to stay? I told you. We don't know. We don't know. But uh, other than that, man, it is what you make out of it. It's what you make out of it. It's what you make out of it. JB Hunt is what you make out of it. But yeah, the inside cameras, as far as those are concerned, hey, it's, it's annoying. It's annoying, but hey, it is what it is. What little bit of privacy that a driver thought he had out here on the road has been cut down by 14 hours. So they can monitor you for 14 hours, however long it takes for you to do your shift that day or your work time that it takes for you to do your job that day, they can uh, they can monitor you. So, it is what it is, okay? But y'all be careful, be safe. I just wanted to give you this one year review on J.B. Hunt and everything, but uh, be careful, be safe. Keep the good Lord with you and everything you do and say and continue to keep Scooby doing my wife in your prayers. We'll do the same for each and every one of you all. We love you. We thank God for you. I'm going to sit back and sip on some coffee probably eat me a banana and uh, wait until they get me loaded. And then we'll head down to uh, Montgomery for 6 a.m. in the morning. That's some of the other truck in here. He just left, J.B. Hunt. And one truck went to Durant, Oklahoma. That's where he went to, Durant, Oklahoma. So I bet they got loads coming out here going everywhere. But like I said, it is what it is, Doc. It is what it is. So this is your boy, Scoop. Y'all be careful. Still trying to get this going. What's the name out of my hand? God, God. But uh, it is what it is. Be careful. Be safe. Love you. We'll talk some more tomorrow. Okay? This is your boy, Scoop.